everyone. This is a, a documentary about 17th half and I'm being highlighted particularly in these episodes. However, this is a story about many young individuals in the inner cities all across the world who are dealing with being disenfranchised in one way or the other by the society that they're in. And their only outlet appears to be each other. And in some cases, not all cases, some of some of us turn to the drugs. And as I'm saying to you, the drugs is only a small portion of what ultimately transpired between the bond, the respect, and the protection that was built off of each of us coming together and building a brotherhood. Yeah, my name is Power of uh, I Power. And um, I know Shadi since um, 1977, 78, around that time. Mm -hmm. So until, until now, and that's over 40 years that I knew Shadi, mm -hmm. you know. We grew up as kids, then as adults, and as grown men. So I knew him all my life. He's a good brother. Well, uh, my government name is Michael Shepherdson. Mm -hmm. AKA Master Savior, I got Allah. I've been a five percenter since the age of 13. I knew Shadi, oh, I was in fifth and she, he was in the seventh. School 20 years ago. A lot of people today, they know me as Abdul Mufti Mujahi Minhaj, Malai Minhaj. Uh, many people call me by Minhaj, and many people call me by Malai. But my family here today raised me as D Hands. Um, I knew Shadi uh, since I was maybe, oof, I was a young guy, I was uh, maybe, oh man, about 13, maybe maybe, maybe 12. Uh, but uh, Shadi was a little older than me, and I always uh, looked up to him, you know, like, uh, like OG, like a uh, big brother. Alhamdulillah, give praise to Allah. You know, brother was a benefit of mine. Name is Nate Sean. Um, I was about 13 when I met Shah D. Um, you know, he always was, he, he, he always like, you know, was preaching to us when we was young because he was a little older than us. He always was preaching to us about unity, we should be buying everything in the neighborhood. And come, I look today, and I'm like, he was right. You know, I'm looking around, I'm like, he was right, man. We were supposed to do that, you know what I mean? He got a part of it, you know what I'm saying? So he, he definitely, you know, was practicing what he preached, man. Hi, my name is Maylin Perdomo. I'm living on 220 17th Avenue, Parkson, New Jersey, 0754 around a year ago. The lander of my apartment is excellent person. She responds every time I has a problem. She responds right away and resolve the problem. I don't have any complaint for her. For me, it's excellent person. And always looked up to him as a big bra. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know what I mean? Whenever whenever they needed him for something, he was dead. He was dead so, you know what I mean? I always yeah, think back at that, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, it's definitely give much props yeah. for that. You know what I'm saying? So, definitely, peace. Yeah. Yo, what's going on? My name is Chris, a.k.a. C. Crow. Me and Shadi go all the way back, like you said, I'd say maybe 77. Stand up, brother. True brother. Always thought great things about the brother because the brother was a stand up cat. And the brotherhood that we built was based on upbringing 
And the upbringing that I received was from being in a family where my mother was the dominant one. And my mother did all she could to make sure each of my siblings, my six other siblings, grew up in a manner to be respectable, fair dealing, and hard workers. Hi, my name is Yamin. Governor Boy, Stephen Boy. Now, me and Shah, we go way, way back. Like, I'm talking about like high school. And me and Shah was so deep. I was like, like, as far as me hustling, I never really hustled with nobody. The only one I could ever hustle with was with Shah did. And, I, and he taught me a lot. Matter of fact, I can remember me and him walking to school. Shah, the one of me and him, came together with my name, pulled up my name, you know what I mean? And, you know, and when we was into the 5%, you know, a lot of brothers out here, you know, perpetrating fake. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of brothers, if their name start with an S, they gonna name themselves Supreme. You know, I ain't do that. I name my name based on my character, based on how I am, you know what I mean? That's how me and Shadi came up with y'all mean. And, and that was peace. And from there on, me and Shadi, phew, took it off. Took off, like I say, Shadi, Shadi, I can't say, I can't say he controlled the block, kept us in line. You know, a lot of us wanted to do stupid and negative shit. Mm -hmm. And Shah was like, nah, nah, that ain't, that, ain't, that ain't how you do it. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? We ready to jump to a conclusion. If something negative happened, we ready to just go out and do some wild shit. Mm -hmm. Shah calmed us down, like, nah, let's do this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So he was a good leader, man. Held us down, you know? Mm -hmm. Kept us in line, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all praises due to Shah Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Can't do wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... My name is Jay Sean, um, a.k.a. Randy Jackson. Um, I knew, I always said, well, I knew Shadi the longest. Um, we met when we was nine years old, school 20 in the fourth grade. Uh, when he came to school 20, I think he was coming from Governor Street, somewhere like the fourth ward over there. And um, at that time... I, could, I always remember um, I was just a, like a little Jehovah Witness boy. I was raised a Jehovah Witness. And um, Shadi was coming from the from the Fourth Ward, the rough part of Patterson already. All, a lot of times I like to say I don't really know how me and him clicked, you know, because he was already rough and tough at nine years old and mature. He was too mature for He was mature for his age. You know, and um, I was um, I was like I said, I was just a, Je a little Jehovah Witness boy, and um, some kind of way we just clicked. I chose a different route for a for a large period of time. Why? Because I started off young, wanting money, and wasn't able to understand at the time that the lifestyle that I chose would later create more hardship in the community that I loved than I even anticipated. So part of the reason that I'm doing this documentary is to make up for that years, or should I say those years that I was a part of causing havoc and the community that I love to the people that I love. We moved here, we moved from Governor Street, Grand Ave, grew up in that type of environment. You know, Patterson was known for boxing back then. Mm. So, you know, when I was coming up, we did not sure we was, who got the fastest hand, who got the best hook. So we was all into boxing. We go on the, on the yeah. block and we go, push, go hard to the body. Yeah. Oh, we shout about some time we smack. But we was all into boxing. And so, so you know, when, um, when you know, I can't hear Muhammad Ali, when I like him because of his speed and the way he talked and, and walking. Uh, when Sha was a little boy, I, that was time when I was teaching, I was believe teaching my family how to box because, you know, I knew how to box. So, I, you know, I'm going to teach my little brother. 
That was the time I had to get on my knees, you know, because y'all was so little. Yeah. So I had to get on my knees and work with, come on, man, throw that. Nah, uh, uh, that. Until, you know, you grew up and everything, and he, and he was nice, man, yeah. because, you know, he, he grew up. Uh, boxing mm -hmm. and stuff. Even when, when, when I, like I said, when I had to get on my knees with, it. Mm -hmm. and um, so that was incident. I remember a big incident that happened. Uh, I had moved down to CCP when the shy came down there visit. He went to a party. They had a party there, and um, and uh, the guy, you know, they they didn't know shy, you know, CCP, uh, so they. The guy approached Shy and wanted to say, I'd like your hat, want to take take that take Shy hat. You know, because he down there with all his boys. So you know what Shy gonna do, you know, but cut a long story short, uh Shy ended up, you know, uh beating the guy up because he tried to disrespect and take his hat. Alright? So he beat the guy up. The, uh so they were getting ready to jump him, but we had one brother that knew me. Uh, for that that knew me from uh, from Grand Avenue and Governor Street, and uh, he spoke up and said, "Yo, man, y'all jump him, and if they gonna be a problem, y'all uh, don't do that." So anyway, they did not jump, so he made it uh, home. Then the next day, uh, we came down to the CCP projects. Shy came to visit me. He was walking with me, and he saw the guy that uh, that tried to take his hat. And the guy said, all right, fight my friend. You know, I said, yeah, shot, fight him, man, fight him. Shot, fought, knocked him out. <laughs> and stuff, so, right? And that, what happened, that, uh, one of the older guys who I get then, me and him got to, I had to take it to him. So it was a big thing, but then they tried to jump me. So, uh, but once they tried to jump my hat, my friend Bobby, y'all remember Bobby? That Bobby, Bobby, Jim, Bobby, Jim, Bobby Yo, He knew everyone <laughs> down there. He, he, he knew friend. everyone down there, so he said, Yo, he, he stopped them from jumping. But I was so angry at the time because they were to jump me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, at that time, all, all, all the, my, the, I was well known from up the hill, so all my boys were up the hill, decided to come down the next day, and and uh, we all were getting ready to get into it, so I got that. I said, let's do it. He did not want to fight again. And, so, and uh, but we had knife and all of that. So we were getting ready to get him because it was up the hill against yeah. down the hill. Yeah. So we were getting ready to get it in. But then you had an older gentleman that came, an older guy, you know, like a big brother type, and said, listen, man, look, what y'all going to accomplish? Mm -hmm. You got knife, you got, what y'all, y'all just going to hurt up each other. What you going to accomplish? You know, but anyway, he talked to us, and, uh, and we, came, we became peace mm -hmm. at that time. Then uh, as we became peace at that time, all the guys from CCP, you know, came to my house, gave me, and from that day on, we all was cool. I was the middle child. I was the fifth child of seven. I had two older brothers, two older sisters, and two younger brothers. My mom had me in the choir at an early age. She also had someone come to the house to teach my brothers, sisters, and I, my siblings, about the Bible, about God. She wanted us to learn how to be upright individuals and we had the individual come to the house to teach us Sunday school and then ultimately we ended up going to church but needless to say later on I shied away from that however some of the values that I received from it remained with me even when I chose to go into the streets and deal with the drug aspect. So through the violence, through the drugs, through the havoc, we grew closer. We, we became a family. 
We protected each other. They show, they show Tyreek. I can't even tell you how many times like Tyreek used to walk up 12th Ave, 5, 4 in the morning, grab me. But Shadi, Shadi was a brother that had a lot of hit, a lot of wisdom at an early age in his life. Um, corporation was something that he always, you know, manifested. Uh, when he was around us, he always talked about a conglomerate, which we didn't understand at that time. You know, as young-minded and immature as we were, Shadi always seemed to have that, that like big brother, like big, you know, that uncle type mentality. You know what I'm saying? Um, even though he was maybe two or three years older than us, he always served as a, a, a brother of example. And um, this is one time that Shadi most impacted my life. And I was on Park Avenue East 18. And I was high as gas. And he pulled up on the corner. And he was like, come on, D'Ange. When you gonna get tired of this? And I was like, you know, bro, I'm, I'm just doing my thing. He's like, nah, man. When you gonna get tired of this? He's like, yo, man, I'm gonna holler back at you later. And the thing about it was at that time in my life, you know, I didn't know how to deal with a lot of things I was dealing with. But no matter what my condition was, Shadi always let everybody know I was his brother. Mm -hmm. No matter what my situation was, he always let people know that's my brother. Mm -hmm. He never shunned me in public. He never belittled me in private. He was always, you know, let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yo, what you, what you doing, Malai? What you doing, Deanne? You know, <laughs> wearing the Godfather. <laughs> you, know what I mean? you know, wearing the Godfather with the mock neck and the visa. Don't right, right. forget the briefcase. The briefcase. <laughs> with a pair of British walkers on. Yeah. It wasn't always, you know, sweet and, you know, good and everything. Of course, we had disagreements. And some people, even went further than they should have in some cases. However, I had took the responsibility upon myself that I would lead everybody, that I would be an example that my mom was to me. And I would repeat that because my mom used to say to me often, you're going to be a man amongst men. She used to say that to me quite often. You see a quick story about me and Shadi. We got so many. We've been friends since we was nine. That's so over fifty some years of friendship. But um, I remember um, when uh, we first met. I was nine years old, and when you um grow up in the Jehovah Witness religion, uh, you taught not to fight. And it's um favorite saying where they say, um, if somebody hits you in one cheek, you know you turn the other cheek to them. <laughs> you know. And um, hanging with Shadi and people like Shireen, you know, and stuff like that, that that wasn't that wasn't gonna go down like that. So I remember my first fight in fourth grade with somebody named Jesse, and uh, Shadi was, you know, coaching me on, and um, and we laugh about this. That I, he always tell me that um, while I was fighting, I was crying. And um, this famous line he always we always talk about is when he yelled out while I was fighting. He said, "Stop crying, you winning." <laughs> and ultimately, through the lifestyle that I was living, and coming to a point where I was able to make a transition, and and I and I'm saying this to all of you young brothers out there who are in those trenches who feel like you don't have a way out you have a way out and i'm living proof of that and one of the the most 
parts of my life that I'm proud of is that I didn't have to go to prison to turn my life around. Many of my guys did. Had to do a hell of a lot of time before they saw what I saw. Through my mom's tutelage, my brothers and sisters, I was able to be somewhat different with my view on things. I always saw that if we came together and we put each other as priority, that there was nothing that we couldn't accomplish as a people, as a team. However, a lot of time my guys didn't see it that way, you know, and it caused a lot of hardship that me personally, I think, could have been avoided. But everybody has their journey. So everybody has to do what they have to do the way that they have to do it. You see this video, but for some of you guys and girls that don't know me, I'm Trey Bag, a.k.a. Trey for short. Couple of things about my brother-in-law slash brother in love. Man, where do I start? A lot of you know Shadi, aka King Duhorn, aka Chef Boy Shadi. <laughs> That's an inside joke. I love this brother with all my heart. He has always been there for me he has always been there for my family he has always been there for my sister and when i say family that's a that's a deep part in my heart um i can go on and on about this brother but like i said a lot of us growing up on the block or uh, us old heads <laughs> no shot d uh, like the back of our hands So everything I say About this brother You guys and girls already know He is Knowledgeable He is respectful And he is always There no matter what Perfect example This past Christmas That just passed My wife Who I have been with almost 30 years, 27 and a half years, had a vision this year. And her vision was for me to spend Christmas with my family instead of with hers this year. As long as I've been down here in Florida, oh, uh, 80 degrees right now too. I don't miss that up north stuff. The only thing I miss up north is family and of course my boys. 17th Ave representing. But anyway, my wife had a vision. And her vision, like I said, was to spend Christmas with my family for the first time down here. And she got on the phone. She made phone calls. Everyone she called came from far and near. And she asked Shadi, chef boy Shadi, her brother-in-law, to do the food before she can even finish he was like no problem because if anybody know my brother-in-law he loves the kitchen me i love to eat i can't cook to save my life but i love to eat so needless to say me and the wife gained 20 pounds over christmas but don't worry about it we 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 we'll, we'll, we'll get it off it, that's not an issue but again like i said for 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 a lot of you brothers and sisters that grew up on the block with us old heads. I can't can't represent that enough. <laughs> no Shadi. And like I said, he is a father, he is a husband, and he is a family man before anything. And I love that and I respect that about anybody. Because like I said, nowadays family is first. And the good Lord up above. So always remember that. I hope this documentary that you guys are doing and putting together about 
old school about us old heads growing up on the block representing you couldn't go nowhere in Patterson and not know 17th Ave for the brothers and the sisters that have gone on to be with the Lord continue to rest in peace know that we miss you and you guys will be mentioned can't wait to see the documentary um i know it's going to be awesome and it, it it's going to be telling so with that being said love you guys be safe out there and always remember please please get out and vote I'm not going to get into the politics right now because that will take up majority of the video but for you brothers and sisters that know what i'm talking about if you know somebody that's at the age that they can vote get them registered and and let's get them to the polls so we can vote love you sha represent brother again congratulations you and jay sean i know y'all going man put this thing together and do it up peace one love. Now, for those who are my, my brothers that we grew up together and you are now upstanding model men and family men working hard to provide for your family. Some of, some of you are, are, are doing activism, but what happened to us and what we are a part of it's something that i'm so proud to be a part of not from how we started but how we ended up right now to the men that many of you have become i'm so proud even though a lot of you was was super hard-headed back then and didn't want to listen to what i was saying and now look we still 10 toes above ground. So a lot of the things that we talked about back then, it's not too late. It's not too late for us to still buy property and own property and be able to take care of our families and put that money together. We can still put that money together and start doing it because I've said that to you guys for so many years and yeah i used to know when i walk away you guys used to laugh at me and think i was a joke but it took me to be able to make the transition from the drug dealer to the hard-working man and then come together with a woman that i would known since my teens and build the lifestyle and end up getting one of the largest properties on the block that many that we all hustled on that i talked about we should have gotten the whole block and it's never too late long as you're above the ground and to all my all my brothers who are no longer here in the physical form i love you you know and that love is never going to cease as long as i'm alive you alive in me so that's, that goes without saying. And in closing, this is a story or a documentary that represents struggle, triumph, unity, and love. And as long as we, as individuals and as a people, can hold on to those things, we can triumph over any obstacles that are placed before us. So I hope you enjoy the documentary. I hope you share it with everyone you know. And don't forget to go to my channel, Peak Game TV, and subscribe if you already have it. Also, Leave comments, you know, leave ideas or, or, or things that you want, you know, Pete Game TV to display, to put out, to put out there, you know, that you want us to talk about. Because ultimately, what I want you guys to understand is the process.
person you see every day or how often you look at my channel, I've always been that person. I've always been the individual who had love for all people, but a special kind of determined love for the people that I'm a part of.